The British sports personality of the year has been announced and the winner is tennis player Emma Raducanu. She won the US Open, the first British woman to win a tennis grand slam in 44 years apparently. Which is great, but she was competing against women, which makes it significantly easier. I was lucky to grow up in an era where sports players didn't have personalities. Alan Shearer, Steve Davies, Nigel Mansell. A face drawn on a plank of wood would be more fun at a party than these guys. But at least they kept the virtue signalling to a minimum, just visiting a kid's hospital at Christmas. Today's sports stars have gone full woke, taking the knee, doing black power salutes, lecturing the government to spend more money while dodging their taxes. There's no limit to their hypocritical self-promotion. I'm nostalgic for the days when footballers only took a knee to pick up a kebab they dropped or do a line of coke off a hooker's arse. Anyway, here are my nominations nominations for British Sports Wokesonality of the Year. First up we have Sir Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, they're handing them out to car drivers now. Lewis takes the knee, he demands statues of slavers are torn down and openly supports Black Lives Matter, so you'd think he'd hate slavery. Sadly, it seems he only hates slavery that happened 400 years ago, as he's happy to race in openly racist countries that still have slavery, such as Bahrain, Qatar and Saudi Arabia. He dressed up like a carry-on movie character and posted about Bahrain, nothing but love and respect for this culture and Bahrain. Bahrain. Bahrain has an estimated 30,000 slaves and is a hub for human trafficking. Lewis is an eco-warrior too. Here he is complaining about oceans being destroyed while he literally rides a speedboat across the ocean, burning oil which contributes to oil spills and rising sea levels, creating noise pollution that disturbs whales. This is, this is like protesting against abortion by drop kicking babies through an abortion clinic window. Lewis has won Sports Personality of the Year twice, but he snubbed it this year because he didn't get nominated. This this is possibly the fastest speed at which toys have ever been thrown from a pram, but he's definitely in the running for sports wokesonality of the year. Our second woke sports star is Marcus Rashford. This poverty campaigning footballer bought five luxury homes worth more than two million pounds, which I think is great. It's really good to see a young footballer investing prudently instead of blowing their cash on cocaine and salt-based tomahawk steaks. But when the story broke, he defended it as investing in his future. Yeah. That's a Tory policy right there. That's literally the motivation for every evil right-wing landlord who's hated by Guardian readers. Why do Rashford and other wokists such as BLM founder Patrice Kalours, who despite being an avowed Marxist invested $5 million of money she made from BLM in a string of luxury properties, get applauded for being selfish right-wing rentier capitalists but other landlords don't? This wouldn't be hypocritical if Marcus hadn't campaigned for the government to provide free school dinners because there are children going hungry and apparently that's the government government's fault rather than the fault of their useless parents spending their kids chip money on cider and scratch cards. Marcus's most egregious hypocrisy is paying himself with a director's loan to avoid paying income tax. The government spends loads of money chasing people for tax which it desperately needs to pay for things like free school dinners, but if you're super rich like Marcus, you can pay for accountants to set up offshore companies and pay yourself with a £400,000 director's loan that you don't ever have to pay tax on because it's a loan, but you don't ever have to pay back because you own the company that lent you the money. Why am I being taxed to pay for the government to give free school meals because Marcus Ratchford said so, but he isn't? His net worth is around £80 million. He could totally afford to pay for all the school dinners himself and still have more money left over than me. Why am I paying? I don't even want the kids to get school dinners. Don't get me wrong, I love the guy, but can we admit he's a Tory? He also embarrassed the Labour Party by becoming the official opposition. Don't embarrass the Labour Party. Let them do it themselves. It's more fun. Also, he totally spannered that penalty. Number three on the woke sports list is Gary Lineker. He's another super rich wokester with a net worth of 30 million pounds. He gets 1.7 million pounds a year from the BBC and one and a half million pounds a year from his deal with Walker's Crisps. When he was asked about the Crisp sponsorship in sport in a GQ interview, Gary said, Crisps are fine, they do no harm at all, like a celebrity advertising cigarettes in the 70s would say. Obesity in the UK is a serious problem. It's rocketing and sitting on your arse watching football while eating high fat nutritionless snacks is a contributing factor. Look at obesity levels rising in the UK. This isn't just a statistic. This represents hundreds of thousands of real people suffering from chronic illnesses, early deaths or having to look at disgusting fat people on the beach. Having a sports star selling crisps 
is so cynical. Gary's not all bad, as well as tweeting at the government to treat asylum seekers better, he's actually taken a refugee into his own house, which brings the total number of refugees housed by lefty do-gooders up to one. And he's given a bunch of his own money to charity, but when I say it's his own money, HMRC are actually chasing him for £4.9 million of unpaid tax because they say he's an employee and should be taxed as such, whereas Gary says he's not an employee, he's a complex web of tax-exempt legal entities based in the Cayman Islands. A final twist is that he genuinely claims that his tweets show that he's not a regular employee because a regular employee wouldn't be able to engage in political activism. So his bullying of the government to spend more of our taxes is an excuse for him not to pay any of his. You couldn't make this up. Number four on the 2021 woke sports star list is Azim Rafiq. He's the former Yorkshire cricketer who blew the whistle on racist bullying he endured while at the club, such as having beer poured over him despite him being a Muslim, which left him close to suicide although not close enough to actually do it. It was pretty serious stuff and when it was finally investigated and reported caused a slew of resignations at the club. The YCCC was banned from hosting international fixtures with huge financial implications for the club and local businesses. But in the fallout it turned out that Azim had been racist himself. He'd used anti-Semitic language and messages to another cricketer. Maybe not as serious as the sustained racist bullying he was subjected to, but it has to be seen in the context of soaring anti-Semitic abuse that nobody on the left gives a shit about for some reason. It was also revealed that Azim had sent sexual messages to a 16 year old girl he drank vodka with on a plain messages she described as creepy and vulgar you know what i wanted to do on the plane i want to grab you push you up against wall and kiss you there aren't walls on a plane they're all curved and have people in the way you'd have to go back into the galley bit where the stewardesses sit and say could you move please i need a flat surface to push a drunk teenager against so i can kiss her don't tell my wife please when the teenager replied to the messages she was asked does that mean it not allowed to want to kiss me and would you have let me kiss you? Not exactly Keats, is it? I mean, I guess it's not the worst thing a Muslim man's done to a teenage girl in the north of England, but, but why was having alcohol poured on him by his teammates so bad and racist and Islamophobic when it turns out he drinks vodka? Finally, number five on the list of woke British sports stars is Laurel Hubbard, the transgender weightlifter who competed as a mediocre male athlete up until her 30s before becoming a top female athlete. She's made great strides for transgender sport by qualifying for the Olympics and then made great strides for women's sport by not winning. Why is she on my list? I know she's not British, but does that matter? She can just identify as British. Also, I just wanted to say my joke again. I'm not sure where Laurel Hubbard had her gender reassignment surgery done, but apparently she's got a 135 kilogram snatch. Thank you very much. It is a good joke. Anyway, that's it. Who wins? Uh, Gary Lineker wins because he dodged the most tax. And the only sports star with any personality is Tyson Fury, as he says himself. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe and if you enjoy my videos please consider becoming a patron and giving me money so I can buy stuff, even if you don't like my videos, become a patron anyway uh, so I can get money. Uh, cheers, uh, have a great Christmas, I've been Leo Kirsten, bye, bye bye bye.